What is up guys, this is Kobe here and in today's video I'm bringing you guys an entire guide over the brand new guild system. So in the Rise patch, the very first update of the Rise patch, there was a really really huge change to the guild system involved. It had a bunch of UI changes, a bunch of skill changes for guild skills and stuff, a bunch of different ways and how guilds particularly, particularly work now. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right into it. So this is the new guild UI page. We got the main page of the guild. We got a little message here telling you what the guild is all about. Got your character name, shows your guild status and how much guild points, how many, how many guild points you have. Uh, next up, we have a page of all the guild members. Here we have a whole entire guild skill page. I'll talk about all the skills here in a minute. I'll talk about pretty much everything. Uh, we have the bulletin board, the BBS. You know, people can write down whatever they want here. And then we have the guild alliance page a couple things i want to start off with is that the level cap of guilds has been increased from level 25 to 30. guilds that have honor higher than the required amount to reach level 25 will have their honors reset to the required amount to reach level 25 when the rise update hits to put the level 25 players on an equal playing field to reach level 30. on top of that you now have to be level 101 to join a guild i'm not exactly sure if that changes existing players that are under level 101 in guilds i think they still stay but for the newer people you do have to be level 101 to join so with the new guild UI, for those that are guildless, it makes it a little bit easier for them to join a guild. When they press the guild button, they see a list of all the people that are currently promoting their guilds right now. So basically what we have are these yellow names and then we have the blue names. The yellow names assemble the people who are only promoting their guild for one hour and the blue name consist of the people who are promoting their guild for one day. They cost the same amount of points, uh, but the ones that are in yellow are up at the top because they're only paying for one hour of promotion rather than just one day. In all these people are just people paying for just one single day. And then um, there are a couple guilds at the bottom. This probably resembles newly created guilds because since I see the guild that I just made on here for the sake of the video, and that's pretty much about it. It costs 1500 guild points for a guild leader to promote their guild. So if you want to have some people join a new guild that you just recruited, you got to go ahead and get yourself some guild points and then just put up whether you want it up for a day or an hour. Also, when you apply for guilds, you have a bit of uh, some filters you can make. You could put down what level you want the guild to be. Um, you could put down how many people you want in the guild and a couple other different things as well. And on top of that, you can also apply to up to five guilds at a time instead of one. When you apply for guilds, you can just, it, it, this is pretty much the same search system as before. Just look up whatever guild or whatever guild leader is running that guild, you know, so on and so forth. Guild leaders can also put up a bit of an introduction for their guild. Uh, to kind of tell people what the guild is mainly about, this is the introduction for Ancestry, the main KMS English guild for the Luna server. Um, there was also the guild that I had just recently made as well. But just, you know, the random message you can put up there. Just anything that's about 100 to 150 characters. I think it's just less than 150 characters in general. Yeah, of course it is. Um, that you can just put up here. Say what you want to say to be able to promote your guild to the people that might be interested in joining. Next up, I'll discuss the emblem feature. So this one is the same as before. You can customize the emblem to whatever in-game customizations they have, and you can pretty much instantly buy it on the spot as long as you have 150,000 GP to pay for it. Or you can use a newly added feature in the game where you could add a 17 by 17 JPEG image of anything you like as long as it's not offensive and your guild has to be at least level 10 or above. But this will cost you 225,000 GP to use it. I'll put up a few examples here in the video just to kind of show some of the things that people have uploaded to promote their guild emblem. For those who do upload something that is a bit offensive to others, 
it will get reported and it will be taken down without notice and when it does get taken down you do not get a refund of the amount of gp that you spent on that emblem because that's just used as like the penalty for doing something you're not supposed to be doing and that's basically that for the guild mark the new guild emblem there have been some changes to guild management uh one of the main things that i'll start off by saying is that you can now see the last login date of players who have logged in less than seven days ago for those who have logged in last time that was you know like a week or longer then it only just appear as you know more than seven days it won't give an exact amount after seven days guild leaders can also set up privilege settings over certain guild members rankings for example in our current guild we have this ranking for you know guild, it's called guild member two and uh, people that are under guild member two are unable to use anomalous skills whenever they please Whenever they try to use them for whatever bosses or anything, it just says that they can't, it's completely disabled for them. But the rest of the guild members are able to use these novice skills. It is something that a guild leader is able to do now after the rise patch. On top of that, junior leaders are able to put in points for novice skills if the guild leader is absent around the time they do reset. This is all I'm going to talk about for novice skills right now. I'll get more into that when I talk about guild PQ and some of the flag race improvements. So, what this rock is used for now is all of the weekly guild rankings. I'm going to be going into this topic next, right now. There's the honor ranking for the week, there's flag race, and there's guild PQ. So how the honor ranking works now is that it doesn't really go by the guilds that have the highest honor of all time. It just goes by how much they receive in the week. And this only applies for guilds that are level 29 and under. Whenever a guild reaches level 30, they are no longer to obtain any honor and they are kicked off of the ranking it's a bit sort of it's mainly used as like a trust system now koreans like to use it for um because you know the more honor you have the less chance you have to just get scammed by others um that's basically that the moment you reach level 30 honor just becomes completely useless and you no longer really have to gp cap or anything like that and again here's the tap for flag race you no longer only have to check flag race rankings inside flag race you can check whenever you want to and then here are their rankings for guild pq so there's been a bit of an adjustment to guild points first things first i want to say that guild skills everything in particular no longer requires igp to use in fact igp is a thing of the past it's been completely removed the game has also become a little more strict with how players gain guild points. Uh, when players join a guild, level up, stay logged in, feign people, get medals, complete quests, and do other things such as that, they usually get guild points for that, right? Well, they're no longer to do that. They're no longer, they're no longer able to do that after this update. That does absolutely nothing for the guild. They updated some of the guild points you get when you clear bosses. I'll be adding a table and translating it and leaving that in the description. If you want to see a full table of the bosses, it shows how many guild points you get when you clear the boss and how many extra guild points you get when you clear the boss with the guild member. GP, GP capping is still the same. Players still have to deal with the same 5,000 GP cap per day. But one good neat thing that I've noticed is that when you minimize the guild tab and you see this fine number right here where it says 2880 that's the amount of gp you have gained in one day so whenever this gp hits 5000 you are capped and you not you cannot gain any more for the day going towards that 5000 gp cap you can now earn contribution through flag race the guild attendance check right here when you press this button you get 30 gp and then if a certain amount of people press the button, you are rewarded with honor as well for the guild. For 15 people, you get 50 honor. For 30, you get 100 honor. For 60, you get 1,000. And then for 100, you get 2,000 honor. And then uh, doing GPQ also rewards you with contribution as well. And then for guilds with absent guild leaders, well, first things first, I don't know why you're in there, but 
guilds with absent guild leaders, if they are absent for 30 or more days, then the guild leader will be passed down to the second highest ranking member of the guild. If it, there is a ton of junior leaders that are active, I'm not exactly sure how they distribute that, but I think it's going to be to the one that has the most guild points. Or is the highest level, could be one or the other, but guild points usually provide more loyalty. Okay, so now we're going to the skills. There are a certain amount of skills that have been removed, such as the mileage encounter or reward points encounter. You can only gain re reward points for being AFK. There's the PQ Guild skill that's gone. The Guild Advertisement Megaphone is sort of gone. They kind of just built it for the guild, a uh, guild leader only thing to do, to where they can actually advertise their guild through doing things like that. And then Guild Meeting is also gone. Guild leaders can't exactly summon the whole guild to them anymore. It doesn't work like that. But we do have some new skills. We have a skill called Less Pain Together. It has a max level of 3, it decreases your damage taken by 10%. There is Guild or Know How, you receive 5% bonus EXP from killing monsters if you are level 101 to 200. And then we have the 3 skills called Guild Spicy Taste 1, 2, and 3. 1 adds 6 ma attack and magic attack, 2 adds 4 attack and magic attack. And three adds five attack and magic attack. They do stack, so when these are leveled up, you will gain 15 attack and magic attack. Um, spicy taste one is level five, while two is level 15, and three is level 25. And then we have the basic skill here guild regular support. This usually gives, like, before the rise update, it gives like 60 of those guild power elixirs and then 20 of the guild blessings. Well, it gives 100 now for this skill at level 4, and you can get it at level 1. At level 10, you get regular support 2, which gives you an additional 100 potions and an additional 5 at guild blessings. And then at level 3, it gives you yet another 100 potions and another 5 guild blessings. Something I do want to mention, though, is that there are two different guild blessings now. Um, I don't know if this makes the blessing any different, but when you have this skill, I know for a fact that you receive a 30 attack blessing instead of a 20 attack blessing. If one person uses a 20 attack blessing from regular support 1, and then somebody uses a 30 attack blessing from regular support 3, the two blessings will stack, and then you will get two different guild buffs for a total of 50 attack. So it's basically an extra 30 attack because the main guild blessing buff before the rise patch only really gave 20 attack. But now you get an additional 30 if somebody can stack them both. We've got, there are stars in me. This increases your star force by 15 at level 3. We get this at level 5. There are, there's also minions are soft. This increases your damage to regular monsters by 12% at level 4. You need to be level 10 for this skill. We have Master of All, which increases all your stats by 40 and your HP by 2000 if you have a level 20 guild and the skill is level 3. And then there is also Together with Arcane Force at level 25, max level is 4, and you gain an additional 30 Arcane Force with this skill. The final new skill is called Sharonian's Demon Riding. You get to ride the boss of the guild party quest, but this is only available for players who are level 30. Basically how this skill works is that every Sunday you get to claim a demon riding voucher for 7 days. I don't know why they just don't make it permanent that. I mean, I, I do understand why they don't make it permanent because if someone leaves the level 30 guild, they don't exactly deserve to get it back so that's why they only make it seven days um and that's basically what that skill is there you just ride the demon as a mount and that's it for the main basic guild changes uh next up i will be talking about guild pq going into more of a further explanation over that and the minor changes that have been made of flag grace as well as the novice skills So how guild PQs work 
Nowadays, with this new system, is that the guild master can talk to the NPC on the top left of the guild HQ hall to be able to open the door. But do be warned that this door can only be opened once per week. When the leader does open this door for the guild PQ, there will be a message that pops up for all guild members online letting them know that the guild leader opened this door and that GPQ is available. And they need to be fast because this door is only up for 5 minutes and obviously only your own guild members can, be, can enter this fight. Um, unfortunately, you cannot open the door between Sunday at 11pm server time to Monday at 1am server time for the sake of weekly settlement. So as you can see on this map, there are a total of 12 entries to the waterway and up to three parties can enter the same entrance. Now, this means for every door in the waterway, up to 18 people can go in. So if you multiply 18 by 12, I really hope I did this right earlier because I'm not gonna do it right now, it should be 216. And the guild cap is obviously 200, so you can pretty much bring as many people as you want. Of course, the more people you bring to GPQ, the better your results will be. When you enter one of these doors, you gotta sit there and wait for five minutes for everyone to come in and kind of just chill for a little bit before the actual GPQ begins. So when the GPQ begins, the three parties are separated into three different paths that you have to go into and you guys will eventually meet up at the middle to fight the boss. There are four different maps you have to go through and in every map you have to fight these mobs. How these mobs work and why you need people to do this PQ is that when you attack them, you miss on them for five seconds. So the best thing you may, the best thing you have to do is you have to rotate around the map killing these mobs while the cooldowns for the misses go off. And of course, the more people there are, the faster they'll be able to clear because the misses are pretty much character bound. It's not like if one person hits the mob, then everybody else misses. No, it's just if you hit the mob, you start missing on it. Everybody else does not miss on it until they hit it as well. So that's how that works for killing the mobs. Based on the amount of people killing the mobs as well, you will receive dungeon points. And you want as many of these as possible because this is what gets you on the rankings. So the moment all three parties meet up at the deepest room, they are able to summon the boss and spend the rest of their time fighting this boss. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this boss is over one quintillion health. So it's basically designed to be impossible to kill. Mainly how it works is that you just go through as many stages as possible and hit it for as much damage as possible. For players that are weak, they can use the cannons to deal a little bit more damage than they usually do to increase the guild points for the guild even more. Now the phases of the boss, again there are 5 phases of this boss, um, they highly depend on the amount of players that enter this PQ. I do know for a fact that you need at least 7 people in the same door, in the same room, to be able to go to stage 3. So for stages 4 and 5, you will definitely need more than that, and I'm going to take a guess, 4 probably needs like 13, and then 5 probably needs an entire room fold out, fold out <laughs> filled with 18 people. And that's how that's gonna work out. But I'm not exactly sure about four and five, but I know for a fact that three requires at least seven people. And three is not difficult to get to. So I recommend if you are going to go to a room, make sure the room has at least seven members. Once this guild PQ was finished, all the time is gone because you're not gonna kill this thing unless you don't have a lot of people when you kill it in early stage. You will be warped out to the guild HQ. And then the amount of points that all of your rooms have received will be added up and then put on the ranking board for the amount of points your guild has received. And then before I talk about novel skills, here are some of the flag race changes. Uh, certain locations of portals and flag race, like the S skip at the bottom, you, you can't do that anymore. They decided to move the portal to the other side so players who have been doing that skip can't exactly do that, but there's still the S skip at the top for whatever reason. Um, 
cannons, they also nerf cannons for people that use them. They can now only be shot up to three times per character, and then when you sit in that cannon, you can only sit in there for 10 seconds. Koreans never really liked the usage of cannons. If you use cannons, and I mean this in like the most serious way possible, uh, you are a terrible person, and I don't think anybody likes you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, but straight up. Uh, you can no longer drop items in Flag Race, and they also increased, I, this might have been like a KMS or anything, but they increased the amount of people who can join some of like the later Flag Races, so they might do the same for other servers. So full explanation of the skills and how the skill points are distributed, uh, we've got boss damage, this has a max level of 15, everything has a max level of 15. So at level 1, these skills have a 2 minute duration with 2%, so 2% boss damage at level 1 with a 116 minute cooldown. When you level up a skill, its duration gets increased by 2 minutes, its effect is increased by 2%, and its cooldown is decreased by 4 minutes. So for example, the guild has level 10 boss. 20 minutes of 20% boss damage with an 80 minute cooldown. IED or level 15 would be, you know, 30 minutes of 30% boss with a 60 minute cooldown. IED is 30% IED, 30 minutes, 60 minute cooldown. Damage, 30 minutes, 30% damage, 60% cooldown. And then we got this bad boy right here that's new, 30% Critical damage. This thing's big. Uh, 30 minutes with a 60 minute cooldown. Um, I really thought they were going to nerf this when they added it in the test server, but it appears that they did not. And these are the novel skills. A total of 60 points spread across all of the skills. So it is explained perfectly right here how the guild skills are, or the novel skill points are distributed. The flag race rates have not changed. As long as you are in the top 80% of flag race, you do get skill points. 80% is 1, 70% is 3, 60% is 5, 50 is 8, 40 is 10, 30 is 15, 20 is 18, 10% is 20, rank 3 is 25, rank 2 is 27, and rank 1 is 30. And then for GPQ, it works a little funny. As long as your guild receives 300 points, 300 dungeon points, you will gain 10 SP from GPQ. This has nothing to do with rankings, just as long as you reach 300 points, which takes nearly no effort. It's super easy to reach 300 points, so don't be too discouraged. Um, and then based on your ranking, you will receive extra points added on top of that. So let's say somebody in GPQ made it to top 80%. They get five Noblest skill points, and that's on top of the 10 Noblest skill points you gain. So that would be a total of 15 for reaching the top 80%. So I'll just add it to that. Top 60, you get 20 points. Top 30%, you get 12 points. Top 10%, you get 14 points. Rank 3 is 16, rank 2 is 18, and rank 1 is 20. So I didn't even add it up. <laughs> so 60% is 20, 30% is 22, 10% is 24. Rank 3 is 26, rank 2 is 28, rank 1 is 30. So our guild, for example, we ranked in 20% in flag, so we got 18. And then we ranked in 30% uh, in GPQ, so we got 12 plus 10, 22. So that's a total of 40. And we put that, you know, 10% boss damage, or level 10 boss damage, and then level 15 damage and critical damage. So that's kind of how the points will be distributed to your guild every Monday. It might take a little bit of time for the GPQ skill points to show up. So that's just something that you need to not kind of freak out about the moment Monday reset hits because the, those might be a little late. So yes, that means for the highest amount of skill points possible, you have to be rank one in flag and rank one in GPQ. Good luck doing both. <laughs> and that is the end of the Guild of Vamp explanation. Now, to be quite honest, with how some of the Guild UI stuff works, I'm not exactly like a thousand percent sure on everything, but I have a pretty decent 
bit of knowledge on how most of the things work. Also, leveling your guild past 25 takes quite a bit of time. It's been since December, been like five months since Rise came out, and we're still only level 28. There's not even a lot of level 30 guilds. I mean, level 30 guilds have been coming through, but more of like the really OP guilds are at like level 29. Uh, on their way to 30 so there will be more level 30 guilds soon enough though but it does take quite a bit of time to reach level 30. Uh, for the tryhard guilds probably not as much as I'm making it out to be but it's not a short process. Anyway that is it thank you guys so much for watching I hope you learned a thing or two from this video uh, and that's it again if you have questions I'm right here and I hope all of y'all have a wonderful day.